This week, more Mandalorian builds, the tracking fob. Fobs, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Anthony Fro here, Crate Sci-Fi. Well, more Mandalorian builds. <laughs> it's kind of become my lockdown project, right? Certain things you do during lockdown where you're like, hey, let me get to this. It feels like, you know, I'm kind of all in on this now. So I'm doing a full Mandalorian costume. Um, you know, I'll keep you posted on that. And it seems like the end goal is going to be a Mandalorian fan film, which once we get done with the costume and we start getting into the film aspects of that, I'm gonna start sharing that with you, which I think will, will be interesting to a lot of you because a uh, fan film, before you can't just go charging in, um, you know, there, there's certain rules and regulations and guidelines and always in those kind of things, there's do's and don'ts that are maybe not on the surface, but. You know, we're gonna to talk to some people with experience, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The tracking fob. <laughs> Fobs! <laughs> Again, another great piece, right? It's it's like, just the design on this show is so awesome. So even though I'm doing a, a, a lot of sort of, um, you know, things that are not or, or original, but sort of almost like, you know, like fanboy kind of builds. It's really helping me just deconstructing these designs. And I know that, you know, when I do my next project, you know, it's going to be better because it's informed by these builds. Now, um, this is a great, uh, this was a great file. Again, the builder, like I do with all these, I'm going to link him here. Here's his name, his contact information. Yeah, this was a great project. But what was fun about this one which I think a lot of you who uh, are a little <laughs> taken back that I've been 3D printing so much. So this actually has a dollar store element in it and it has a hardware store element in it, right? So not 100% 3D printing. So, you know, I print the body and then a lot of the, the models that I found have sort of this antenna that you can print, but I actually made this out of stable uh, cable steel and then these are real crimps. Now, this is not screen accurate, but I think, you know, if you follow me, you, you know that I'm not interested in screen accurate on this. I just want it to be an object from that universe for an original character that I'm creating, right? So the light is just one simple light. I was like, okay, I, I have to do that. This is basically a, a dollar store, um, you know, bought something at the dollar store, which I'll show later, ripped it apart, put the one light in there. Little bit of soldering. Um, you know, uh, you, you know that on Bondo Challenge on this channel, I am a Bondo expert compared to my soldering. But, you know, these are the kind of projects that you do. Um, you know, if electronics is not your thing, like me, but I know I need to work on it, this is the project that you have to do it in, right? I mean, that's the way I look at it. And then this, like I said, is not screen accurate, but having this real cable on there definitely makes this uh, a, a better feeling pop, right so these are a lot of fun they match uh the rest of the set right so so far what do we have we have the disruptor rifle we have the blaster we have the vibro blade and now we have the tracking fobs <laughs> very straightforward build very fun very doable right so if you just watch these builds um because you like watching people make stuff i, I follow a lot of channels where you know, I'm never going to blacksmith, but I watch every week. <laughs> this is actually a project you could consider jumping in on. And my friends who are builders, let's just add this to your collection. All right. So enough about that. Let's get into it. All right. A little printing montage. So I'm slicing it, printing it, stacking them up. I uh, did a little bit of alteration on this one, but not too much. But let's let's kick it off with the light, right? So I went to the dollar store. Bought a bunch of these like party lights, dollar each. And I just like these because they're made cheaply. So that means they come apart cheaply. You know, I, like I always say, like electronics is something I still need to spend time on. So here I'm just sort of um, looking at what I have and what I need to do. All I need to do is have this one light 
flashing, right? So of course that would be easy, but you can't really tell on the video here, but that's a small LED. So I have some larger LEDs from some other party lights that fit right, and I have blue. In the show it was red, so I'm just doing blue to do blue. I don't know, I just kind of liked it better. So here's the helping hands, and you can see here, I mean, I think you can tell there, like I'm struggling with, with the soldering, right? And it's you just needed to solder two points. So I definitely need to do more projects, but that was pretty straightforward. We just zipped through that, but it probably, I don't know, took me 15 or 20 minutes. And Punish Props, Bill Duran, what I picked up from him is, you know, you just put a little hot glue, you can put hot glue on there and it's not gonna mess up the circuit. And especially when you're using it for a prop or a costume, putting that hot glue on there just makes it a little sturdier, right? It's gonna stand up to sort of being knocked around. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking some scrap foam and what I wanna do is just build a little sort of um, a, a rig, a little saddle right a little little piece that holds um the light in place but then also holds all of my electronics just so things are not like i said jostling around right this thing is meant to be carried in the hand probably put in a pocket or a pouch so um i i want it to be sort of bulletproof if you will so there is the final test on that and good so the lights are taken care of now i can get to hmm let me think about it Yep, sanding. <laughs> but before that, so last time I used this plastic uh, wood filler, and like I said, it worked good for this sort of thing. So on the bottom of these prints where it was on the bed, there's just, you can't really see it in the video, but there's some really like defined grain sort of print lines that I want to get rid of. So here with the air putty, I got it in front of a fan, air helps it uh, dry faster go figure <laughs> and with this one i like it because it's purple now it's brown so i know it's dry right so i'll start with a 220 grit one thing about this piece with the fob it's pretty square right so uh sanding is not as difficult as some of the other pieces that are more organic so there i just went from a 220 to uh 320 on the pad and now this is like a 500 right so um all I'm doing with the sanding is, right, you want it to be ready for paint, but the other thing you're trying to do is, with the 3D prints, you know, if you look at um, people's 3D print projects, there's sort of like a, a separation, right, where you separate the, the big boys <laughs> from, the, from the regular stuff. And it really is, if you look at it, it's sanding, right? People who don't sand, they look like 3D prints, and you get that striation, right? So now I'm putting sandable fillable primer so even though i spent all that time sanding i'm putting on this thick um sandable primer that's going to further fill in the lines right so back to what i was saying if you look at 3d prints and they look like 3d prints to you it's because people didn't spend the time to sand right and you see the print lines which is fine but not for what i want to use it for right and that, like i said it's like how far do you want to go and Pretty much it boils down to sanding and filling and then sanding again, right? So here I'm sanding again, right? And this is basically all that work we just did is to get it to where you would be sanding something now that wasn't 3D printed. Does that make sense? I, I might've made that too complicated. It's like, so now we're at a core base piece that's a piece, an object, not a 3D printed object. And that's what's pretty cool to me. So here I have these sanding twigs. These come in handy. Um, I get these. Uh, these are the sort of things like the, the the throwaway brushes. Whenever I'm at a hobby shop, you know, I pick up a handful of them just so I have them on hand. And, you know, you notice in this piece, there's that like little round um, detail on the front. And that comes in great for stuff like that. Right. So now I'm putting on just the regular nice primer. Right. So um, the primer drives and then I have this matte black that I've been using on all these uh, parts that I really like. It's, it's supposed to be for your, for your wheels. So it's just a little thicker, a little more durable. And that looks great. So now I'm gonna do a dry brush with the silver. And what that's gonna do is just make it, you know, look metallic. It's gonna give it that, that worn out look. And um, with this, just, you know, just kiss it just a little bit. Sometimes, you know, I do it just right. Sometimes maybe 
uh, you go a little too far, it's always a dance. But, you know, you get better at it. And, you know, we weather the stuff anyway, so, you know, you can always dial it back. Now I'm putting some clear over that because um, we don't want to build up muddy layers. We want to build on top. So here I went to uh, the Home Depot and I just got, you know, that cable, which was like not even a dollar a foot. So that was like a couple dollars. And then those crimps, I think, where it was like $2, right? So instead of 3D printing this, we're going to put a, a real piece of cable in there, which is really going to add uh, visual interest and value and weight. Now, I measured um, a, a, a draw or, or a photograph, and the actual real prop in the TV show, it just, it looks too long to me. So I'm just eyeballing this again, so it's not screen accurate. And I, I don't have bolt cutters, so I just use my <laughs> Dremel there to cut this cable. It wouldn't just cut with the, with the tin snips. It needed something more hardy. So, um, and I don't have a crimper, but I have a vise, right? So, you know, with these props, you know, we're always improvising. If it's something that I feel I need to buy a tool, I'll buy it. But in this case, you know, that, that was fine. So now I have these pieces. And again, this is my own feeling about how long they should be. It's a little shorter than what's on the show, but this is, you know, this felt right to me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, put some epoxy in here and a little bit of super glue. Um, and also um, in the in the real one, there's sort of like these, um, these marks, these indentations. So I just added that to my piece just to give it a little life. Now I'm sanding it down um, just so that it looks like, you know, like these things have been passed around a lot, right? Telling a story with this. So I'm just sanding it just so that it doesn't look like I just crimped a piece of aluminum on a wire, right? And then just those lines makes it look more like the prop. Um, and then here, you know, uh, the doors, because, um, you know, I just put maybe three layers of paint on there, it's, it's, a, it's a pressure fit, right? So you just want to go through with the file and just get rid of all those extra paint layers. Otherwise, it's not going to fit together, right? If I was smart, I would probably print it a little thinner knowing that I was going to load it up with paint. But, you know, I'm not that smart. <laughs> so now I'm going to take some rub and buff. And typically I say, you know, ad nauseum, don't go too heavy with the rub and buff. But it occurred to me on this project it would look better and be appropriate to almost paint with the rub and buff, right? So based on the prop, I just really did sort of what I always say not to do. <laughs> and that's it put all like this thick coat, but you know, in this case, it really works. Except for on the back there, because that's a, a, a recess, not a, a sort of raised piece. I couldn't use my finger. So here I'm just using an old brush. Um, I'll probably have to throw it away after that and just to get that square, right? So now that, you know, that is screen accurate, right? <laughs> so that worked out perfectly. All right, so uh, yeah, I got ahead of myself before. So now I'm doing the five minute epoxy. That's just so I can get a nice bond in there um, with the uh, cable into the prop. Um, you know, anything where I know I'm gonna have to finesse it, that's when I like to use the five minute epoxy. If it was sort of like bang, I know it's gonna go straight in, don't have to sort of wiggle it or uh, coerce it, then I use the CA glue. So now this is a trick that I do sometimes. So now I'm gonna spray paint this black, totally black with a really cheap, uh, you know, dollar a can spray paint. And the reason why is now I'm going to, um, sort of scrub most all of it off with steel wool and that really just gives a really nice effect right so you see the one with it and the one uh without it and uh yeah i just like that i did that on the the cube that i built all right so now i'm gonna do just some basic weathering this is with the acrylics the black and the burnt umber that's pretty much my go-to combination the black wash is the grease the grime the sort of mechanical soot. And this I do a wash, and then what I'll do is wipe that off with the paper towel. With the burnt sienna, I do like little stabs, little specks, 
if you just wash it with the burnt sienna, you end up with like a sepia look, which is what I don't want. And then the burnt sienna, I pat it off. Pat, 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 pat. And then, you know, you just go back over with the black and with the brown and it's, I don't know, there's no, there's no exact way to do it. It's just sort of, after you do it enough times, you get a feel for it, right? And now I've been doing this long enough where I kind of have my thing that I go for and that I do. It's, it's comes with practice, right? And uh, I just did a little bit of red fingerprints there. Every once in a while I'll do the red bloody fingerprint. And then now um, we're gonna seal this in with uh, the clear. And then um, what I'm doing here is, you know, you can sand the LED lights. And what that does is, you know, in the video, it's really just blowing out blue. But when you look at it in person, it just diffuses it a little. Here, I'm just trying to put just a little bit of super glue so that if I ever need to pop that out, um, I'll be able to do it. So I didn't want to, you know, really jam it in there, but I wanted to make sure it was staying, right? And then, so now I'm gonna do the powders. I like to do the powders as sort of the final um, pass. And I just put a little dirt in there and that's what the brown is. And then I take my brush and I'm probably wiping off 90% of this, right? But that 10% that stays, it's just it's just a nice touch. And then now I go over with the with this, I wanna say black, but it's more of like a slate gray. And I also use the black where, um, you know, there'll be certain places where maybe I feel like I went too heavy with the rub and buff or too heavy um, with, with the brown weathering. And then that black helps me to dial it back. And then now I just do one final little delicate, tiny um, pass with the rub and buff. And this is just to pop a few highlights here and there, um, just cause you know, we did mute it a lot with the powders, you know? And like I said, right there, that's some place where I went too heavy with the rub and buff. So I'm just using the powder to just knock that down. And what I find is, you know, when you're going back and forth like this, it actually helps to build up the story, right? So correcting things that went wrong is sometimes a good thing. Now I have them lit up and yeah, that's looking really good. Let's let's uh, do some beauty shots. And there they are, just had to make two. And you know, and you see here on film, that's why I like to do it on the white like this. You see how those colors just really pop and, and you know, just that you can really see on the white background, just that little bit of brown maybe a speck of blue, the black, all these little things really make it come to life, right? And then the real cable just really sells it, I think, as opposed to if I 3D printed that, right? And look at that grime on the top there, it looks like rust. Yeah, I'm really happy with these. And, and just by accident, the lights are not in sync, which is good. So it'll be more interesting when I film it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sometimes, you know, it's, it's the simple things that give you so much joy, right? Oh, such a great uh, project. And, you know, like I said, because it has this real sort of steel eighth inch uh, cable on it, it just feels different, right? So, um, uh, fire it up. Boop. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. Well, yeah, like I said, I'm doing a Mando project. Stay tuned, I'm collaborating right now with a maker overseas, very far overseas, uh, to do all the armor, right? So I've been 3D printing everything that I can. I could 3D print the armor, but, um, you know, I, I hooked up with the, uh, the guy who made an awesome 3D printed set of armor, and then I noticed that he also uh, does casts of them. So we're working on a collaboration, and um, I know a lot of people get bummed out when it's only 3D printing. So, you know, buying a cast is also an option, right? So um, that's coming up uh, probably in a couple episodes, but once that's um, actually in my hands, then we'll talk more about that. But in the meantime, tracking fobs. <laughs> Mandalorian builds during lockdown. This is the way. <laughs> Well, as always, I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Love to read the comments. And be sure to check out the merch shop. We got the hats, we got the shirts, 
buying the merch really helps support the channel. And remember, I'm just here to help track sci-fi. <laughs> it's that way.